Hi there, this is David and welcome to my impression and review of Lisa the Painful, released for Steam in 2014. On a personal note, I don't play many indie RPGs like this, so this is a new experience for me, and I had not heard of it until it was brought to my attention by a fan and patron, and he asked me to review it, so I was happy to oblige. Keep in mind though, my reviews are 100% my opinion, and there's no guarantee that they're going to be glowing, so with that in mind, let's get started. When it comes down to TV and movies that I enjoy, I like to keep it light. I don't watch crime shows or horror movies, and I really hate to see somebody murdered on TV. Shows like Downton Abbey, Gilmore Girls, or Seinfeld are more my speed. It's just something to escape into. But with Lisa, there's no escape from the dark, somber themes. The game is weird, but not weird happy. It's weird depressing, and I've never played anything quite like it because I like to keep my gaming about as light and cheery as my television shows. However, Lisa is decidedly dark. Giving it a passing glance or looking at screenshots, you may think that it's something akin to Earthbound, and while they do have some similarities, they have many more differences. Earthbound is humorous and fun, in a quirky way. Lisa, on the other hand, tries at some attempts at humor, but the dark, morbid tone that pervades the game kept me from really smiling or enjoying it. Right off the bat, the story punches you in the face, quite literally. You're getting beat up by the town bullies, only to drag yourself home, beaten and bloody to your alcoholic father, looking for a bit of sympathy. But instead, he just throws his bottle of beer at you and sends you off to your room to cry yourself to sleep. With little to no exposition, years pass, and you're out on your own and stumble across a female baby who you promptly decide to hide from the rest of the world because, for some reason not explained, only men exist in this deserted wasteland. However, it soon comes to pass that the girl grows up and isn't exactly happy with her lot in life, so she either runs away or gets captured, it's not quite explained. She just kind of vanishes and it's up to you to rescue her. Brad, the hero, explores the wasteland in a pretty basic way. He can only go left or right, jump straight up, short cliffs, and climb ropes. However, get ready to take tons of fall damage as you're climbing about, because falling any more than two blocks down damages you. This may sound simple, but it does make for some non-linear gameplay, and I'm going to age myself here, but do you guys remember that game on the NES, Ragar? It was very difficult to know what to do next or where to go, so you pretty much just had to go and jump around all over the place until you stumbled upon your next destination. That's kind of what Lisa is like, too. You're pretty much just wandering from one area to the next with no direction whatsoever on where to go until you either hit a sequence trigger or die. And believe me, you'll die in this game a lot. This is not an easy game. I played on normal, but I found myself wishing that there was actually an easier mode, or at least something where the game doesn't actively try to dissuade you from enjoying your journey. Brad is pretty much always on the verge of death and has little of anything to help him out. Even at the very beginning, battles take quite a long time. The enemies are no pushovers, having gobs of HP and hitting pretty hard. It's pretty obvious to see where the developers got their inspiration from, but while battles in Earthbound were fun, here every single one is a life or death situation and game overs are a real threat. And to make matters worse, game stacks the odds against you. Right at the very beginning, I was hit by a truck, and I had the choice for the bandits to either kill my absolutely useless sidekick or rob me blind. You're damned if you do and damned if you don't, but being the nice guy that I am, I had them take all my items. Every last piece of equipment, money, healing, and attack item that I had was then gone and I was on my own. Thankfully, later I stumbled across an encampment where I could rest, but upon waking up, I got pistol whipped and my stats were permanently decreased. By the time that I dragged myself, bloody and half dead at the game's version of a town, I couldn't even afford to buy the most basic equipment or healing items. I was still naked and screwed. Maybe this sounds like fun to Dark Souls fans, but it wasn't for me. By this time, I was depressed, disorientated, and feeling like a failure. So I used the town as a home base and wandered off trying to figure out where to go to next, barely surviving each battle and hoping to stumble upon a new area that would give me a clue as to where to go. But that didn't happen. 
I kept going in circles. I found a man who wouldn't shut up and later joined my party, which I thought was kind of ironic because the game had like no exposition whatsoever to explain the beginning of the story, but then the writers put so much effort into the useless conversation with this guy. Maybe it's supposed to be funny or something, but I wasn't laughing. I also found a guy who promised to teach me a new skill if I fell off a cliff until he was satisfied. I face-planted at least 10 times, getting damaged with no healing items and hoping that he would teach it to me, but to no avail. I'm sorry, but I'm pushing 40 years old and time is of the essence, and I really don't have the time for this. I can't spend all day wandering around from screen to screen in the vain attempt that I stumble upon the right area to move the story along, or talking to this idiot for a year and a day, or falling off of a cliff a billion times, or moving at a glacial pace, and I certainly don't have the time to do it all over again because I got a game over and I was slaughtered in battle. And speaking of those battles, it's not like you can even grind. The battles are static, so you can only get so powerful. As I was playing, it kind of reminded me of Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. Remember how you had to keep on dying and kind of start over to, in order to really proceed there? Well, it's kind of the same thing here, only in Dragon Quarter, you actually got advantages by starting over with the party experience mechanic. But in Lisa, you'll instead just learn the shortest path from point A to point B to hopefully get there without being killed along the way. Maybe it gets better the further along that you go, and I do see that it takes roughly 10 hours to beat, but I think that everything that I saw in the first two hours is pretty much what the rest of the game entails. Hardly any story about the characters that really matter, random daddy issues popping up out of nowhere, battles that drag out forever because the enemies have far too much HP, and the worst, rolling around back and forth as slow as molasses looking for where to go next with absolutely no direction. I can see that it would have a niche of players who enjoy this type of thing, I'm just not one of them. Well, that's it for my review of Least of the Painful. Told you guys that I'd be honest. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.